All right, so now we're just gonna go back to the top. And now if you wanted to actually trade Tesla, you can click on the trade button at the bottom and you can choose to either trade options or to buy the stock. Since this video is gonna be about buying stock, we're gonna skip the options and I may make a video about trading options later, but let's click on buy. Once you click on buy, the default option is going to be a market order to buy a number of shares that you choose. And so you'll see the section where you can enter the number of shares that you wanna buy. So if you wanted to buy just one share, you'll see that the estimated cost is $880.44. If you were looking to buy 10 shares, it would be $8,804. The reason that it says estimated cost is that when the market is open, the price of an individual stock is constantly changing. It could go up, it could go down. And when you're choosing a market order, you're essentially saying, I would like to buy the stock. I don't care what the price is. I don't have a specific price point that I wanna buy it at. I just wanna buy it at whatever the current price is when my order executes. And so when you do a market order, it could be lower or higher than the current estimated cost. And so if you're okay with doing that, you can click review. It will let you know if you don't have enough money, it will say you don't have enough buying power. I don't currently have $8,800 worth of cash in this account. So of course I can't buy 10 shares. But if I still wanted to buy it and I had money in an external account that I wanted to transfer to Tesla, then I could do so by making a deposit. So we're gonna click cancel because this is just an example. Now, if you wanted to change the type of order you can make, if you wanted to have a little bit of control on either the price that you wanted to buy it at or you wanted it to trigger at a later time once it reached a certain time point, you can change the type of order that you put in by clicking at the very top right where it says shares. On this page, it'll give you different options for the type of orders that you can make. Currently, you have two options with a market order. You can buy a specific number of shares or you can buy a specific number of dollars. I'm actually gonna skip the buy in dollars portion and I'll come back to it. But if you wanted to buy a specific number of shares and you wanted to control the price at which you actually bought those shares, that is when you would choose a limit order. So we're gonna click on limit order. And if you click on the I symbol at the very top right, it'll give you a visual example of how a limit order works. So essentially when you choose a limit order, you are setting a specific price that you would like to buy it at. And what it is essentially saying is that I would like to buy it at X dollar amount and no more than that. And so the price of Tesla would need to drop to the limit price that you choose or below that limit price before your order actually executes. And so let's go back, click the X at the top left. Now you can enter the limit price that you want. The current market price of Tesla stock is $879. So let's pretend I only wanted to buy it once it was at $800 or less. So I can enter $800, click continue. Once I choose the limit price, I can now choose the time that I would like it to process. If I choose market hours, that means I only want the order to go through between the time of 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. Or I can choose extended hours, which means that after market, which is usually when news could significantly change the price in a short amount of time, whether it's earnings or some other good or bad news. And that would extended hours is from 9 a.m. Eastern to 6 p.m. Eastern. And at the very bottom, you can see the warning where it says trading during extended hours involves additional risk like increased price volatility and lower trading volume. We're going to choose extended hours anyway because it's an example and click continue. Next, you can choose the amount of time and force for this trade. So you can either set it to where if it doesn't process on the specific trading day, or in this case, since the market is closed, it will be the next trading day. If Tesla does not drop to $800 or lower on tomorrow, then my order would be canceled if it doesn't go through before the market ends or before extended market ends at 6 p.m. Or I can choose good till canceled. That will give me 90 days for Tesla to drop down to $800 before my order actually processes. And so we're gonna choose good till canceled and then click continue. And again, you'll have another option to change the amount of shares. So whether it's one share at $800 or $8,000 for a total of 10 shares at the $800 value, you can then click review and it'll let you know if you have enough money or if you don't. We're gonna click cancel because we're not buying 10 shares of Tesla today. And we're gonna move along to the next order type. Now the next order type you can choose is the trailing stop order. And we're gonna click on the I symbol so you can get a visual of what that looks like. 
And so essentially what a trailing stop order does is that you can select a specific dollar amount or a specific percentage that you would like for the price of the stock to go up to before you actually buy. And so let's say if you are expecting some bad news or if the market as a whole is going down, then you could have a trailing stop to where you would like the price of Tesla stock to go up 10% or to go up $50 before you actually buy again. That way, if the stock continues to go lower and lower and lower, you will only buy once it has made a definitive move to the upside. And so we're gonna click X to go back to that screen. And from here, like I mentioned, you can pick a percentage. That is the default that is already set. I can choose 10%. That would show that my stop price is at $968. And so in order for my purchase to go through, Tesla would have to rise up to $968.88. If it were to do that, then Robinhood would then set a market order to where you would automatically buy a certain amount of shares that you would choose. And what you would do is click continue. And then from here, you can set the time and force. It can be for today or it can be good to cancel for 90 days. We're gonna do good to cancel, click continue. And then here you can choose how many shares you would like to buy once the price of Tesla goes up by 10%. Now the other option, which you can actually choose edit order to go back, instead of choosing a trail percentage, you can choose a trail amount. And so we can choose amount like maybe $50. And then that means the stock would have to go up at least by $50 per share before you buy. You would then click continue. You would then choose the time and force. We're gonna choose good till canceled. We're gonna click continue. And then from here, you can edit the amount of shares again. It could be one share, 12 shares, 120 shares, whatever the case may be. You choose the amount of shares, you click review. If you have enough money in your account, it will give you an order summary. All right, now the next order type, we're gonna click at the top right where it says trailing stop order. And we're gonna choose the stop order type. And then we're gonna click on the I symbol at the top right so you can get a visual of how this order works. Now with the stop order, you're choosing a price that is above the current stock price that you would like the stock to rise to before you actually buy the stock. And so this is very helpful, especially if you're a trader or if you're looking for a specific stock to change its current trend before you actually buy into it. And so for example, let's say if Tesla keeps going from 800 to 900 over a three month period, but it never goes over 900. But you know that once it goes over 900, that's probably going to trigger a lot of people to buy the stock because maybe $900 was their resistance level. Instead of risking potentially losing money or having that cash held up when you could have used it for another stock, you can actually wait till it reaches that price. And then whatever cash you have in the account based on the number of shares that you want to order, it will then place that order. And this would be a market order once the price of the stock goes up to your stock price. And so if you saw the previous section, you saw that there was a trailing stop order. The difference between these two is that with a trailing stop, the stop price would actually change based on how much the stock price that you're following goes down. It would essentially trail it down as well. But with just a plain stop order, your stop price never changes. It is set. There will be no purchase unless it goes to or above that stop price. And so let's say we only want to buy stock in Tesla if it goes over $900 because then you have an idea or you think that there will be some upside value once it actually goes above this price. So you would type in 900 and then click continue. Next, you would choose the amount of time you want, whether it's just today or 90 day period when you choose good till canceled or GTC, then click continue. And then now you can enter the number of shares that you wanna buy at that point, whether it's one, 10 or hundred shares, click review. If you don't have enough money in your account, it won't allow you to make the purchase unless you make a deposit to cover the amount that you're purchasing. So we're gonna click cancel because this is an example. So now we're gonna to go to the next order type. So we're gonna click on stop order at the top right. And we're gonna scroll to the bottom for the stop limit order. And we're gonna click on the eye at the top right so you can get a visual of what this order does. And so if a stop limit order, you're actually putting in two orders at the same time. You have the stock price, which is essentially your trigger. So the price of the stock that you're following or that you want to purchase would need to go up to that stock price. And then the limit price would be the maximum that you're willing to pay for that stock. And so in order for a stop limit order to work, not only would it have to go up to the stock price that you set, 
but then it would have to go back down to the limit price you set. So in my previous example of the stop order, where I mentioned maybe Tesla could be fluctuating between 800 to 900, but it never goes above 900. If you set your stop price to 899, because it's been going up and down from 800 to 900, then you know that if it continues that trend, it's going to drop back down to 800 again. And so once it drops back down to 800, which would then be your limit price, you can now buy it at $800 instead of buying it at that $899 where you know or you think based on previous trends that it's going to drop back down to 800 again. So if you're following a stock, you have enough information, you know how to read charts and you have a feeling or you have specific knowledge that you have that tells you that it's probably going to drop back down to a certain price, then you can use this stop limit order to pick the high point of where you want it to reach in order to automatically trigger your limit order. And then that way you don't have to actually have Robinhood open in order for this order to process. You don't even have to be paying attention to the stock market. Once you've done your research, you have a feeling of what you think is going to happen. You can set that order now and then you would have a maximum of 90 days for that specific scenario to happen in order for your order to go through. So we're actually going to set up the stop limit order. We're going to choose a stop price of $899 because we know that it never actually reaches $900. We're going to click continue and then we're going to set a limit price, which will be a price below the stop price that we selected. Now, you don't have to choose a limit price that is below that, but there would be no point in using a stop limit if you're going to pick a price that was above the actual stop price. So the point of this order to, is to pick a higher stop price and a lower limit price, and you want to buy at that lower price. But if you want it to just buy as soon as it hit your stop price, then you could just put in a regular stop order. There will be no need for the stop limit combination. And we're going to say that our limit is 800. So this means that we will not buy the stock unless it is $800 or less. I'm going to click on continue. We're going to choose the amount of time we would like this order to be open. It can be up to 90 days with a good till canceled order. We're going to choose good till canceled. Click continue. And then we can enter the number of shares we want to buy, whether it's 100 shares, 10 shares, or one share. Click review. If you don't have enough money, they'll let you know. And then you can make a deposit from your external account to cover whatever order that you're trying to place. All right, so we're going to get click cancel. And the reason that I've given examples of a stock, which I actually can't afford based on the money that's in my account. As you can see, I currently have $58.42 in my account. But the great thing about Robinhood is that you don't have to have the total amount to buy a full share. You can actually buy fractional or partial shares. And that is the section that I skipped previously in this video. So now I'm going to go back and change the order type. We're going to click where it says stop limit order. And now we're going to go to the buy in dollars option under market order. So if you click in buy in dollars, this allows you to pick a specific dollar amount as little as $1 for any stock that is available in Robinhood. And so I could literally buy $1 worth of Tesla or a dollar and one cents, click review. And then in my order summary, instead of getting the, you have to make a deposit, because I have more than a dollar worth of cash in my Robinhood account, I now get the order summary page and now I can buy just $1 worth of Tesla instead of having to have to buy a full share of Tesla, which would be $879. And so when you have enough money in your account, you can swipe up, that order would go through for just $1 worth of Tesla. So this is really cool. If you wanna buy Tesla, you wanna take advantage of the over 10X gains that Tesla has had over the past year. So, but let's say you didn't have $70, which is the low over the past 52 weeks. But also think about back in August of 2020, Tesla actually had their stock split. They had a five to one stock split. And so the $70 that you would see on the chart for Tesla now would actually be $350. That was the price that the stock was at in March of 2020. And so even at that time, if you had $70 at that time, you could have bought one fifth of a share of Tesla. And because the shares have gone more than 10 X since March of 2020, you would have actually over $700 worth of Tesla. And you would actually have a full share of Tesla now based on the stock split. And so your one fifth of a share 
because there was a five to one stock split, you would then multiply the number of shares you own by five. But then you would divide the price of the shares by five, which is why Tesla now shows that it was $70 in March of 2020 when it was really $350 at that time period. And so had Tesla not actually split and there was no change in the value per share, one total share of Tesla would actually be worth over $4,300 at the moment instead of $877 per share. And so had they not split and you only own one share of Tesla, your one share would have been worth $4,385 or a little bit more than that. But after the split, instead of owning one share at over $4,300, you now own five shares at $877 per share. And so no matter how many shares you own or how many dollars you have put into Tesla stock, if Tesla stock goes up 10%, you will gain 10%. And so even if you only own $1 of Tesla today, if the stock were to go up 10%, then the value of the stock you own, which is 0.00115 shares, it would now be worth a dollar and 10 cents instead of just a dollar. And so this is great for people who may not have a lot of money or they may not be able to invest a lot of money at one time. They can actually set up a schedule to invest as little as a dollar or $10 or $100 or whatever they can afford to invest even in a high price stock like Tesla. And so actually, if we go back, we can click on dollars and we can choose a conditional order, the option that I skipped over last time, which is the recurring investment. And so with the recurring investment, you can set either a daily, a weekly, a biweekly, or a monthly schedule to where you can buy any stock available in Robinhood with as little as $1 on a regular basis. So if you wanted to invest just $1 a day into Tesla, you can actually do that. You can click on daily. You can click continue. Choose the account that you want the money to come out of. We're going to choose Robinhood buying power. Click continue. And then I can enter in $1. And every day I can actually buy $1 worth of Tesla stock. And so Robinhood, as well as many other platforms, they have really taken away the excuse for anyone to invest. Everyone should be able to invest just one dollar whether it's one dollar a day one dollar a week or one dollar a month you never have too little money to invest your money can always grow in the stock market and you don't need thousands of dollars to get started all you literally need is one dollar to get started investing in the stock market and so i actually have a video where i talk about all of the different platforms where you can actually invest as little as one dollar or five dollars or any platform where you can invest into fractional, also known as partial shares in the stock market. So make sure you check out those videos. And so if I wanted to do a dollar daily, I've set that up. I click on review. At the bottom, you'll see the order summary because I do have at least $1 in my account. But since this is a recurring investment, whether you choose your Robinhood account as the account that you want to pull from, or you choose an external account, you want to make sure that whatever schedule that you choose, the money in your account, whether it's within Robinhood or with an external account that you always have that amount of money ready to invest. All right, so we're gonna click on edit. And this is what people actually refer to when they mention dollar cost averaging. When you're dollar cost averaging, you're buying a specific stock or maybe an index fund on a regular basis. And they call it dollar cost averaging because when you buy on a particular day, the stock price may be $900 today, tomorrow or next week or tomorrow, it could be $910 or $1,000. And because you're investing the same amount of money on that regular schedule, then the number of shares that you're purchasing is also changing, even though the dollar amount that you're buying does not change. And so let's say if I was investing $1,000 worth into Tesla once per month, if I were to invest $1,000 a day, then that would buy me more than just one share of Tesla. That would actually be about one and one tenth shares of Tesla. But maybe next month, the way Tesla moves, maybe next month, the stock is actually at $1,000. And so now my same $1,000 is only enough to buy one full share instead of one and one tenth of a share. And then maybe the month after that, it is already at $1,200. And now instead of a full share, I'm actually buying 0.83 shares of Tesla. And so as the stock goes higher, because you're investing the same amount of money, you're buying less of the stock. But when it goes lower, you're actually buying more of the stock. And this may be a good thing 
if you expect that the stock is going to do well long term. Of course, you want your thousand dollars to be able to buy more shares of stock than less. But this can also help you control to where you're not buying a full share of stock every time Tesla goes up. And then that means that you're also buying more dollars worth of shares when you go up. And so you can kind of control it by picking a specific dollar amount and then everything will average out over the long run. But the best part is you don't have to think about it on whatever schedule that you set up, whether it's daily, weekly, or monthly. You don't actually have to go into the Robinhood app to put in the order. You've already set it up. It's a set it and forget it, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. All right, now that you know how to buy using Robinhood, now we're actually gonna go into how to sell on Robinhood. So since I don't have any actual shares of Tesla, you didn't see the option to sell here. And so I'm gonna go to one of the stocks that I already have within my Robinhood app. And let's take a look at Vuzix. Now Vuzix, I bought maybe about three or four months ago. This past day, it was actually up 19%. Over the past week, it's up 56%, 56%, past month, 61%, and the past three months, 254%. And so you can see over the past three months, it's been up 254%. I, you can now look at your position and see how much the stock was when you bought it. When I bought Vuzix, it was $4.56 per share. It is now $14.90. You can see today's return, which was 20%. And so the total I gained today was $50, but the total that I've returned over the time period that I've owned the stock is $206, which is just about the same as the three month period. And you can also see the total value. I have 20 shares. It is valued at $298 total. Once you multiply it by the $1490 per share that the current cost is at. If I had any recurring investments, I would actually be able to see it here, what that recurring investment was but I can also set up a recurring investment from here if I want to. But what I wanted to get into is to show you how to sell. So we're gonna click on trade. And now you see the option for sell since this is a stock that I already own, we're gonna click on sell. And now the default sell option that comes up is a market order. Currently is it is set to sell a specific amount of dollars, but I'm gonna start with selling total shares. So let's click on selling shares. And so if I wanted to sell some of these shares, let's say I wanted to sell half, I would then type in 10 and then click review. And since this is a market order, it will automatically sell at whatever the price is when the stock market opens or during the extended hours, if you have that as an option. Not all companies give you the option to sell during extended hours. And so this would actually process between the hours of 9.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. Since I am recording this aftermarket, this order would execute at 9.30 or sometime shortly after 9.30. Now you also have the option to choose sell all. And so that would automatically enter the number of shares for you that you own if you wanted to sell all of your shares. But you can also go back up to shares. And if you wanna set a specific dollar amount or a specific type of order, you can scroll down to the conditional orders. And the first option you have is a limit order. And now for a visual of what a limit order is, you can click on the I symbol at the top right and it will give you a visual of what that means. And essentially what a limit order means is that once you set the limit price, the price of the stock has to reach that price at least or higher before your sell order goes through. And so let's say when I first bought Vuzix, I wanted to gain 100% before I actually sold the stock. So that way, once the stock, which was a little bit under $4, we're just going to say $5 for easy math. If I bought the stock for $5 and I wanted it to double before I sold any, and I expected it to do so within the next 90 days, I could set a limit order for $10. And that means that the stock won't actually sell until it reaches $10. Now, if you choose a limit price that is below the current market, market price for the stock, that is essentially like setting a market order especially if it's significantly lower. So if I were to set $10 as my limit, which is below the market price, once I click continue, it'll let me know that this is likely to execute immediately because the limit price that I chose is lower than the current price. Now, this isn't how you really want to use a limit price. You usually want to use a limit price to select a price that's higher than the current stock price is. So we're going to click on edit limit price and we're going to enter a price that's higher, let's say $20. 
and we're going to click continue. From here, you can choose the market hours or extended hours. So if you want it, it to only execute between 9.30 and 4 p.m., which is the normal market hours, or you can choose between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m., which is the extended hours. We're going to choose extended and click continue. You can also choose the amount of time you would like the order to stay open. So you can choose goods for today, or in this case, since it's aftermarket, good for tomorrow. And so if I chose tomorrow, at any point between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Eastern, if the price were to go over $20, then my limit order would go through. Or if I expect it to take longer, I can choose good till canceled, and that will give me 90 days for the order to go through. And so I'll choose good till canceled and click continue. And then from here, you can change the number of shares. If you wanted to do 20 shares, you can do so. If you only wanted to do half, you can do that as well. And then now when you click review, it'll give you the order summary and let you know that you're placing a good till cancel limit order to sell 10 shares of Vuzi. Your pending order, if executed, will execute at $20 per share or better. Now, the reason it says or better is that $20 is the limit. It is the minimum that you want to sell it for. So let's say there were earnings after market the day that you set this and you set a good till canceled. It didn't reach $20 before the market closed, but the next day it opened at $25. Your limit would actually sell at $25 and not at $20 because you're choosing a limit to say, this is the minimum I want to sell it. And so if it happens to be much higher than the limit you set at the time that the order is able to execute because the market is now open, then you would actually sell it for $25 and you would have a 25% higher gain than you expected originally. All right, so we're going to cancel that. And now we're going to look at the next order type, which is the trailing stop order. And this is actually one of my favorite types to choose from because this allows you to lock in additional gains. And so if I click the eye, you can get a visual of what this looks like. And so if the trailing stop order, what you're doing is you're setting a price that is below the current stock price. And so if the stock were to drop to your stop price, then your order would execute and you would sell. The added bonus of using a trailing stop is that as the price of a stock continues to go higher, then your stop price also increases. So let's say for easy math, Vuzix is currently $15 per share, but we set a trailing stop of $5, meaning that the stock price would need to drop by $5 before your order executed. But let's say the price of the stock goes up from $15 to $20 then now your trailing stop would also go up by $5. So now instead of being at a $10 price, your trailing stop would go up to $15 because the price of the stock has also increased by $5. And as it continues to goes up, as long as the stock price does not drop by $5 or more, then your trailing stop will continue to follow the stock higher. Once the stock price actually drops down to $5, then your order would be put in if it hasn't already been canceled. And so let's say Vuzix never drops by $5 until it goes to $50 and then it drops down to $45. If it's within the 90 day period, if you chose good till canceled, then you would actually sell the stock at $45. And so instead of the initial stop price that you selected, which was technically $10 based on the $5 trail that you selected, you're now selling it at $45 because the price of the stock has gained so much during that 90 day time period. And now you are able to lock in those gains without actually looking at the Robinhood app and following it on a daily basis. You pick a specific price, whether it's an amount or a percentage that you're comfortable with selling it at once it drops, and then it does the rest for you. So like I mentioned, you can choose a percentage or you can choose an amount. So I'll go with the amount since that's the example that I chose. We're going to choose $5 as the amount. We're going to click continue. Then we'll choose the amount of time that we're okay with it staying open until it cancels, which could be just one day or up to 90 days with good till canceled. I select a good till canceled and click continue. And then I can enter the amount of shares that I want to sell once the stop price is triggered by the trailing stop. And so that could be all or part of it. Enter whatever you want, click review. And then it will give you an order summary to let you know you are placing a good till canceled selling trailing stop order for 20 shares. Your order will execute at the best available price if Vuzi falls from its highest price by $5. And the reason it says best available is because once your stop price is triggered, 
then you will put in a market order and the best price that it can sell at that point is where it will be sold at. So in my example, it went to $50, it dropped by $5 and it's now at $45. It's not guaranteed that you're gonna sell at $45. It could be slightly higher or slightly less depending on how fast the stock price fluctuate and if there's an available buyer in the market at that price point. And so I'm gonna click edit to actually go back and click edit order. And now we're gonna to change to a percentage. Let's say we want it to drop by 20%. And so instead of a specific dollar amount, it goes on a percentage based on the highest price of the stock. And so currently it's $14.90. If it were to drop by 20%, then it would be at $11.86. And so using that same example, if it were to increase to $50 before it dropped by 20%, 20% of $50 is actually $40. And so instead of that tighter $5 trailing stop, as the price of the stock increases, when you use a percentage stop, then the dollar gap between the actual high point and the price of your stop also increases. And so when we chose that initial $5 trailing stop, it was always locked in to be exactly $5. When you choose percentage, the dollar amount will change based on the fluctuation of the stock. And so right now at the current price, it's only a difference of about $3. But once, if the price were to go up to $50 per share, then that trail would actually be $10 lower than the highest stock price of $50. And so if you were to set a trailing stock percentage, if you wanted to change that percentage as the price of the stock increases, let's say you don't wanna lose out on $10 per share. Once it gets up to $50, you could then change it to maybe 5% or a different percentage or 10%, whatever you chose. You can make that decision at that time point if your order doesn't execute before you have a chance to change it. So we're gonna click continue. Again, we're gonna choose the time and force to be either today or 90 days, which would be good till canceled. Click continue. And then you have a last chance to choose the amount of shares, click review, and you get your order summary at the bottom. All right, so we're gonna to go to the next order type. So we're gonna click on trailing stop order to change the order type. And let's scroll down to the stop order. Now to get a visual, you can click on the eye symbol at the top right. This will give you a visual and the defined definition of what a stop order is. But essentially what a stop order is, is that you're gonna pick a price that is lower than the current stock price. And if the stock were to drop down to that price, you are now entering a market order which will immediately sell at the best available price at that time. And so the best price could either be the exact price that you choose, chose for your stop, it could be slightly higher, it could be slightly lower. It all depends on the movement of the stock during that time period. But the difference between a regular stop order and any of the other combination periods is that once it reaches the price that you select, it is automatically putting in an order, a market order, and whatever the best available stock price is, that is what it's gonna sell it. And this stop never changes until you change it. So when I pick my stop price, I'm picking a specific price for the stock. Let's say it's $10. We click continue. We can then choose how long we want the order to be open. If we want it to be open just for one day, that is the first option. Or you can choose up to 90 days, which is the good till canceled option. I've selected that and then we'll click continue. And then from here, I can choose the number of shares that I would like to sell once it reaches my stop price. Let's choose 10, which is half, and then click review. And then I get an order summary of what's gonna happen if I like this and this is the order I wanna put in, I would then just swipe up to submit that order. All right, so we're gonna move along to the next order type. Let's click edit at the top left and then click on stop order at the top right. And the last option here is the stop limit order, which is another combination order. Now for a visual example, you can click on the eye at the top right. It will show you visually what it looks like when you set a stop limit order. So when you're setting a stop limit order, you are picking a stop price, which is below the current stock price. And then you are picking a limit price, which is actually above the current stock price. Now you don't have to choose a limit price that is above the stock price, but it's kind of pointless to choose a limit price below because you know that that order will automatically go through because with a limit price, you are saying that I, I don't want to sell for less than whatever that limit price is. So let's say Vuzix is currently at $15 per share. I pick a stop price of $10, but the limit price that I choose is $12. That means the price of Vuzi stock 
would need to drop down to $10 and then increase to 12, at least $12 before I actually sell my stock. So keep this in mind. This is a two part order. So for the example, the stock is currently $14.90. I'm going to choose a stock price below that. Let's choose $10, click continue. And then I choose a limit price, which is higher than my stock price. I'm going to choose $12 and click continue. Actually, for an example, I'm just going to show you $8 and it'll give you a warning once we get to the end. But you can choose this order is good for today or good for 90 days with good till canceled. We're going to choose good till canceled. Click continue. Now, when you click review, it'll actually let you know that your limit order will be for $8 or more. But if you do it the proper way, we're going to choose edit order. We're going to choose stop price again at $10. And then we're going to choose a limit that is higher at $12. Click continue. Choose good till canceled again. Click continue. And this is the proper way to set it where your limit price is higher than your stop price. And then we're going to click review. And then you can see the order summary at the bottom of the page. And so in order for this order to finish executing within the next 90 days, the price of Vuzi would need to drop from its current position of $14.90 down to $10 and then go back up to at least $12 before your order actually sells. All right, so now we're gonna go back to the next order type. We're gonna click on edit at the top left. We're gonna click on stop limit order at the top right to change the order type. And the examples I just used were all selling full shares. Next, I'm gonna to go to sell in dollars. And so if I wanted to sell a specific dollar amount and not in a specific amount of shares, let's say I just wanted to sell $50 worth of Vuzi, I can actually type in $50 and click review. And then once I do that, it'll show me that $50 worth of Vuzi based on its current stock price would be 3.35 shares, which is just under 20% of the total shares that I own of this stock. And so because Robinhood allows you to buy fractional shares, you can also sell in fractional shares. And this order would be executed on the next day since I am recording this after the market has already closed. And so even if you buy in full shares, you don't have to sell in full shares as well if you want to sell a specific dollar amount, because Robinhood allows you to buy and sell fractional shares, you can sell a specific dollar amount as little as $1. Or you can sell all and you'll get whatever the current market price is at that time. So that is it for the regular stock trading portion of the Robinhood app. Thank you for watching. If you've made it this far, you likely found this video helpful. So I would appreciate if you would subscribe for more videos just like this. Hit the like button because you really like this video and hit the notification bell to be notified the next time I create a video. If you would like for me to make a step-by-step -step video on how to trade options using Robinhood, definitely leave a comment below. This would be a beginner's guide, so it will also help you to understand how options work from a very high level. Options can be very complicated, but can also go really deep into helping you understand more about the stock market, as well as having realistic expectations with your trading. If you have not already opened a Robinhood account, feel free to use my referral link below. With my link, both you and I will receive a free share of stock valued up to $500 a share. Once you link your bank account to the Robinhood app, no minimum deposit is required to receive your free share. Thank you for watching. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you really like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video just like this. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.